Chapter 30, Zacked Powers. Wow, what a lightning strike. Like crashing your own funeral. Hugh hello, fell off the flatbed. I didn't blame him. I was seriously thinking about taking a dive myself. This didn't make me look so great either. The people close in realized who had just shown up. They went berserk, hugging Cap and shrieking with joy. Farther back, there was a buzz of confusion. Something was going on, but nobody could figure out what. Finally, a couple of guys in the front row helped Cap onto the truck. The wind took his long blonde hair and blew it into a halo around his face, backlit by a street lamp. The roar from 1,100 throats combined shock, disbelief, happiness, and even love. I was used to crowd noise from playing football, but I never experienced anything like this. The ground shook. The echoes bounced off houses and buildings. It was unreal. The hairball tried to say something. Forget it. There was no way anyone was going to hear him over the sounds of celebration that he was still among us. He had a couple of shiners and a cut on his nose where Daryl had decked him. Yet, it was obvious to everyone that the 8th grade president was not hospitalized, not suffering from amnesia, not in a vegetative state, and was very, very much alive. Naomi, her face glowing and streaked with tears, reached down for the fallen microphone and handed it to Kat. Still, the thunderous ovation went on. I clocked six full minutes, but it might have been longer. Finally, the tumult died away and expectant silence covered the crowd. Cap shuffled uncomfortably and said, this isn't the Halloween dance, is it? A wave of laughter greeted this. I'll bet I was the only one out of the 1100 who knew that he wasn't joking, me and Winkleman. I can't believe so many worried people were worried about me, he went on. I'm fine, I just had to go home because Rain got out of the hospital. My life isn't here anymore. I live at Garland Farm. He seemed to spot someone on the edge of the crowd and gave a shy wave in that direction. I followed his line of vision and noticed an older lady who waved back with a cane. Even if she hadn't made that gesture, I would have been able to pick her out. She was the only adult in hippie clothes, peasant blouse, long cotton skirt, day-glow headband with a yin-yang disc in the center of her forehead. Stunned disbelief was the only way to describe her reaction to the sight of Cap on the receiving end of all that love. Trust me, I could relate. Rain, he said gravely, I'm sorry I came here when you said not to. I did it because I really wanted to see a dance. But there was another reason, too. I left school before I had a chance to say goodbye to everyone, so I guess I should start that now. He turned to the right side of the front row. Goodbye, Jason. Goodbye, Trudy. Goodbye, Leo. Goodbye, Ariel. Goodbye, Trevor. Goodbye, Mike. There was a titter of amusement that died out quickly when people realized he wasn't stopping. Goodbye, Daniel. Goodbye, Raj. Goodbye, Heather. Goodbye, Naomi. Goodbye, Jordan. Goodbye, Lena. Goodbye, Hugh. This was getting weird. He went all the way across the first row and then started along the second in the opposite direction. By this time, there was absolute silence in the parking lot. Goodbye, Daisy. Goodbye, Emily. Goodbye, Julius. Goodbye, Sam. He was halfway down the third row when I finally clued in. Cap was planning on saying goodbye to everybody. He was saying goodbye to everybody. I had a flashback to the assembly two months ago when Kasigi had first proclaimed him president. As a goof, I told the kid he had to learn everyone's name. And somehow, by some miracle, he'd actually done it. Goodbye, Severin. Goodbye, Jay. Goodbye, Kelly. Goodbye, Phil. No football player could fail to recognize what I was experiencing right then. It was a moment on the field when you realize that you are completely, hopelessly outclassed. When I looked at the hairball on the payload, I didn't see the 8th grade president. I saw the Super Bowl champions. There was no defeating a kid who could memorize an entire school. Goodbye, Natasha. Goodbye, Annabelle. Goodbye, Patrick. Goodbye, Marco. It took almost an hour. Nobody moved. We barely uttered a sound. It was the kind of performance that came along once in a lifetime, and you didn't want to miss one second. It was like being part of history. 1,100 students, 1,100 names. He never hesitated, and he never got one wrong. I wouldn't even know when he was finished, except he set the microphone down on the flatbed and started to climb off. Nobody let him. Daryl rushed over and hoisted him on his shoulders and began to tote him through the cheering crowd. Naomi and Lena were at their side, screaming their heads off. I waited over to join them. After all, they were my friends, and it was time to bury the hatchet. Hippie-loving friends were better than no friends at all. 
Cap called down to us. Rain's waiting, so we headed for the older lady in the yin-yang headband. It was slow going because everybody in the place wanted to high-five the living legend, navigating those outstretched arms like it was plowing through a field of bamboo. When Daryl finally deposited Cap onto the tarmac besides Rain, she barely noticed him. She was being chewed out by a younger woman who I'd seen around the school a few times. What he did with those checks as an adult, he would go to jail for. Rain's face was ashen. He tried to give the school's money to charity. Who taught him any different, the woman ranted. I remember your brand of education. None of us had the faintest idea how to survive in the real world. I was lucky I had parents. Who's Cap going to turn to? You won't live forever, you know. So that was what would happen with the checks. It wasn't Kasigi. It was pure Cap, taking the hippie thing too far, as usual. And instead of getting arrested for it, which would have happened to the rest of us, excuse me, he was elevated to rock star status. Cap regarded his grandmother nervously. There was supposed to be a dance, and I'm not sure what happened. Are you mad at me? Of course not, she told him. Then she turned to the younger woman. Goodbye, Flora Mundy. It didn't sound friendly. Bye, Cap, piped up Daryl as grandmother and grandson got into a double-parked pickup truck. We love you, Naomi yelled as the two sets of hippies' hair disappeared down the street. The woman called Flora Mundy hugged a really good-looking high school girl who was holding a rubber Minnie Mouse mask. I did a double take. She was Cap State? The mini to his Mickey? Unbelievable. While he was busy turning C average on its ear, Cap still had time to pick up a supermodel? Had the whole world gone crazy? I spun around like a victim of amnesia, desperately searching the parking lot for a glimpse of something, anything, that made sense. And there, in the dispersing crowd, my eyes found Hugh Winkleman. He looked terrible, his clothes disheveled, his glasses bent and askew. He was such a dweeb. But he was almost my dweeb now, the only kid who stuck by me while the whole school flocked to the hairball. I was kind of starting to appreciate that guy.